morning, everyone. So hope you're enjoying your classes and learning new things every day. Okay, great, great. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. So uh, yes, today we are to touch upon the remaining insights from uh, the chapter on intercession and then we will try to move on to chapter 30 in our notes so i'll just do a quick recap uh, of uh, intercession and then you know we will uh, cl uh, close off with the last section there uh, so we said intercession is uh, simply going to god on behalf of others and uh, our example our best example is the lord jesus who has interceded for us the intercession of jesus uh, while he was here on the earth is seen in the work of the cross okay so he demonstrated his intercession it's more than him just praying for us did he pray for us yes he did pray when you read uh, john chapter 16 there are prayers for believers prayers for disciples so he did pray for us with his words uh, but on the cross the work that he did for us in carrying our sins, in carrying our burdens, is an act of intercession in itself. So he carried, he bore our uh, pain, our sin, and he became a reconciler. He became a mediator, an intercessor on our behalf. So that action is what we are referring to as an act of intercession. So he went to God on our behalf uh, and uh, he brought us the mercy and the forgiveness of God. Uh, and also through the cross, what the Lord Jesus has done is he has given us the victory from every work of darkness. And we uh, sort of compared that to what we do as intercessors and said, even we do the same thing. Right? We are carrying other people's burdens. We take it to God. We go to God on behalf of people okay we go to god on behalf of people uh, and then you know we um, also declare the victory of jesus on the cross for us yeah uh, so that is what intercession is and then we uh, said that you know uh, even right now the lord jesus he is our best high priest he's in the presence of the father and uh, he continues the work of intercession for us up in heaven so uh, we looked at some of the others in the word of god who um, have also spoken on behalf of others abraham is a wonderful example uh, you know when he interceded for sodom and gomorrah then uh, when he interceded for Abimelech. Uh, so we, we see God intervening on the basis of somebody's prayer, uh, a righteous man's prayer. And then Moses. Now Moses is a great example of a leader who's interceding for his people. And because of him, the children of Israel, their lives were preserved. Now we, we do know that they were very, very uh, hard hearted. They were lacking in faith. They were uh, uh, not thankful. And despite the condition of their hearts, it was Moses who kept going back to God and saying, God, uh, please spare them. And God heard his prayer. So one of the important tasks of leadership is to pray for the people whom God has entrusted to us. Okay, so uh, all this is what we looked at and we said that there is a great need for intercessors. We know that sometimes we go through uh, challenging phases in our lives. We, uh, we could have loved ones uh, in our lives who are also going through difficult times and we can minister the power of God uh, into their lives through our prayers. Okay, and it's a beautiful uh, ministry which God has given us. We can bless others through intercession. We saw how Job cried out to God and he said, you know, would there be somebody, will there be anyone who will mediate uh, for me with God? Will anyone plead my case uh, with God? Any man who will plead my case with God? So Job was in a desperate situation and he was looking for an intercessor. And today you and I can be those intercessors 
praying for people, praying for uh, regions, communities, nations, uh, and any any uh, person or community that God, God calls us to pray for. Then uh, we also said that God is looking for intercessors. Okay, uh, so God, even through one person, we saw that scripture in Ezekiel where God said, "I'm looking for one man to stand in the gap." So uh, today, if we feel discouraged that oh I I don't I don't know of any uh, team or group of intercessors that I can join and pray, uh, it doesn't matter. You know, if you're the only person who senses God putting something on your heart, you pray. Because even one person praying, we see in scripture, God look for one man applicable to one woman. So even one individual praying can make a world of a difference. And God is looking for such people to pray. Okay, uh, And then, you know, uh, we, we talked about how uh, when it comes to earnest prayer, some of the needs for earnest prayer are in the area of healing, where uh, there can be prolonged sickness that some people are experiencing, or in the area of people going astray, uh, you know, wandering away from God. So in both of these matters, we, we must really persevere. It may not be easy to keep praying to see the breakthrough happen, but, you know, we continue we trust God and we will see a breakthrough and intercessors are needed uh, especially in these two areas to pray for healing and to pray also for people to come back to God okay. uh, yeah and we we also touched on the fact that the Holy Spirit is our helper now if we feel that we are weak in some way um, we can ask for God's grace uh, and, and the Holy Spirit is known as the spirit of grace and supplication so he will help us he will strengthen us to keep making these prayers of intercession uh, and also we notice that you know he 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 comes alongside us meaning he kind of holds our hands and he empowers us to intercede for others so we can completely rely on the Holy Spirit who strengthens us. So having seen all these aspects about intercession today, we will talk about some of the ingredients that are necessary for successful intercession. So I'm, uh, do, I'm going through the points in our notes and on page 46. Okay, so the first ingredient which is required is to move in God's love and compassion. Now, this is understood. If we do not carry uh, God's heart for people, uh, then persevering in intercession will not be easy. Okay, But uh, when we carry God's love, you know, God's compassion, then it's easy for us to intercede. For others you know, just i'll just give you an example if there is a brother or a sister in church who is sick and you know you have seen this person struggling uh you know or you've heard you know about their experience of how they are going back to the doctor often but i'm not feeling comfortable i still have pain i still uh, uh you know need to overcome the sickness so the as we hear of the challenges that the person is going through, you know, it really, it really touches our hearts, and we we feel for them. We we uh, we experience that that sense of you know love and mercy and kindness for that person. So, for intercessors, it's very important. And I, let's not just put some people in that category of intercessors, but I'm sure all of us can pray. Yes, there are a few people who are called specially for the ministry of intercession, but Everybody can intercede. You know, when we hear of people's needs, naturally, that love of God must flow out of us, that compassion for people, where from that place, we say, okay, I really need to pray for this brother. You know, uh, he's sick and uh, he's not able to experience healing. Okay, God, in the name of Jesus. You, know, you seek after God. Let this brother experience healing, Lord. So it must come from a place of love and compassion. You know, this is kind of, it happens every day, right? Every day we hear of so many uh, testimony, uh, sorry, experiences. Like, at least for me, it happens. Suddenly somebody will message and they'll say, Pastor, 
I'm going through this financial difficulty. Please remember me in prayer. Uh, or you know, someone will say that uh, today all this quarrel happened uh, in my in my with my siblings. Please pray for me. So there are all these needs, and as you see each one of those messages, I know humanly sometimes it's it's um, impossible to repeatedly pray for all the requests that are coming to us, but to the extent that we can, you know, whenever I see a message, I try to pray immediately. Okay. And then uh, if the Lord continues to place that on my heart, then I will pray repeatedly for that request. But at least once, as soon as you see something, uh, that, that, that compassion of God, that kindness of God, you know, it causes us to pray or intercede. And that's very important. So moving in God's love and compassion is the first thing that is required for intercession. If we don't have that, then you know how can we pray for others so uh, we can ask god to give us that heart that uh, you know it, that moves for people it should move for others for their suffering okay uh, and when we see others challenges uh, we are willing to sacrifice maybe our time or uh, you know our energy to pray for them so again be led by the holy spirit now, for some uh, things that God puts on our hearts, we may want to, we are moved to such a degree that we keep praying about it again and again and again and you know, till the breakthrough comes in that person's life. But maybe there are some other requests that you see and for all practical reasons, you're not able to pray through regularly, but do the best that you can. Maybe at that point, you just pray for that person. But God's love and compassion should move us and that is very important for us to be successful in intercession second desire to see change in the prevailing conditions so you know based on the word of god then we know that you know god has promised healing god has promised blessing god has promised breakthroughs god has promised deliverance when you see somebody who is in a contrary situation you know our heart goes out and we think oh why should this this brother face uh, this kind of an oppression. He should be set free in the name of Jesus. So what happens? We we desire to see change. Uh, this person should be set free from their addiction. Or, you know, this person who has gone away from God, they must come back to God. So whatever is, you know, the, the existing challenging condition, our desire is to see a change. Surely you know, these people should come out of these circumstances. They should be blessed. They should uh, experience the power of God in their life. So that that desire to change, uh, uh, you know, to see the change must be there in the heart of an intercessor. Now, generally, when we talk to people who are so burdened for the land, who are so burdened for cities and regions, uh, you know, when you ask them, brother, how come you are interceding like this? For so many years, I'm seeing you, you are praying for Bangalore city. They'll tell you, see, I'm asking the Lord for this revival. You know, I'm trusting the Lord for this breakthrough. I've not yet seen it. So that is why I'm just continuing to pray. So an intercessor is kind of chasing after that change. Okay, God, I trust that you are going to make this happen, right? For a person or a community of people. So we must desire to see the change in the lives of the people whom we are praying for and that also will motivate us and that will help us to be successful in our intercessory prayer the next point here is identification okay uh, so this simply means see it is similar to the love compassion and all that we talked about earlier here uh, if you look at the scripture in romans 12 verse 15 it says rejoice with those who rejoice weep with those who weep so it's empathy. So, you know, when, when uh, let's say, for example, a child in your house, maybe your son, daughter, nephew, niece, somebody, one child gets hurt and they're crying. You know, sometimes you feel that pain, isn't it? They are crying, but it's like, ouch. You can feel the pain. That is called empathy. So when they are weeping, you kind of go with, with, what they are experiencing. That's what God is calling us to do. Now, uh, I, I said about weeping, but 
the scripture also says rejoice with those who rejoice that's why when people are celebrating and god is doing great things in their lives what do we do we rejoice with them but we also weep with those who weep so in the case of intercession you know uh, we identify with the people we identify with the people now who taught us to do this jesus on the cross you know, the scriptures say that uh, he identified with man he didn't deserve to die on the cross but he identified with sinful man and the sin of the world was put on him right so that we can become the righteousness of god in christ jesus so he identified with mankind and he felt our pain he felt right uh, what we go through that shame that cutting away from god for for moments he felt that when the sin of the world was put on him so identification is something that jesus did for us and we learn from his life so when i am praying for somebody uh, you know it is helpful for me to identify you know sometimes you hear intercessors really pray for repentance when they are praying for the land and they might pray something like god forgive us lord you know we have we have sinned against you we have done this you know we have uh, dishonored we have dishonored your work we have dishonored your name but then when you look at the life of that intercessor you would realize hey this is a very righteous person he or she i don't think they have done these crimes they have not uh, done the things that they are repenting for but what is that that's actually identification you're identifying with those who have done it and the pain the shame right that that individual who has wandered away from god would feel the intercessor is kind of sensing it in the spirit and saying god you forgive me it's like it's as if they are saying you forgive me i have done the mistake whereas that person has never done the mistake right so we learn this from the life of jesus where jesus felt for us you know the the, the things that we experience uh so you read about jesus in the book of hebrews hebrews chapter 2 uh for in that he himself has suffered being tempted he is able to aid those who are tempted so it tells us that when we are going through temptation jesus can identify why he was also tempted in every way so you know he will not say oh how ungodly unholy how come you are asking me for help in the a uh, case of a temptation don't you know you are the righteousness of god in christ jesus just confess it three times you know he doesn't do that but he identifies okay you're going through this temptation it's hard for you i know how it feels right so jesus is that kind of an intercessor and we are just being told that you know we must have that heart that identifies with those who are going through the pain the temptation the weakness okay and our high priest you know in the uh, scriptures we see a high priest uh, was selected as a representative among men uh, you know one among them representative so that he can identify with the people so when people would come to him he could go to god on behalf of the people because he can sympathize with the weaknesses of the people and the bible tells us in hebrews 4 that the lord jesus right he is our high priest and he is not a high priest who doesn't know what life on earth is you know what pain is what suffering is he is not disconnected from those things but he too has experienced them so that is why we are told he is a high priest he can sympathize with our weaknesses and that is why we can go boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need so that's the way in which you know a uh, god ministers to us so as an intercessor basically i just go by the example of jesus when he identifies with the one who is in need of prayer anything it could be any uh, uh, any need but with sympathy jesus hears their prayer in the same way as a as an intercessor when i pray you know i identify so uh, i don't do it as i'm doing them a favor no but you kind of move with that same sense 
uh, and, and sympathy and you reach out to God. You know, and when we are ministering like that, it's not easy to give up, especially uh, when God is impressing some requests on our hearts, right? And I know of some people for a long time they pray, you know, they, they, they will keep asking you, how are you doing? Uh, you know, you were going through this, how are you doing now? And I wonder to myself, hey, it's been months. They still remember, they still are praying for me. That's amazing, right? Because they deal with you the way uh, Jesus deals with us, right? The high priest who sympathizes. So having that as an ingredient uh, in our attitude makes us successful intercessors, okay? Okay, then next is boldness. Okay, it goes without saying, um, you know, every successful prayer has to be prayed in faith. So faith brings the boldness. So when we know God's word, when we know, okay, this person, according to God's word, they must experience a breakthrough of this kind. We go boldly, we say, Lord, your word says that by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Your word says you have forgiven all our sins. You have healed all our diseases. So on the basis of the word, you hold on to the word and you say, God, I proclaim, I declare. And you just go and you intercede on behalf of that individual boldly by faith. Okay. And the prayer of faith. Right? We've seen that in, in the book of James, the prayer of faith will heal the sick. So similar to all other situations that we are interceding for boldness and boldness is based on faith in God's word. So boldness also is essential for a for an intercessor. Then fervency and persistence. You know, we've already talked about this. There are certain circumstances where uh, one needs to persevere and, and not give up easily. Uh, and an intercessor should have that in their hearts and uh, wait till people experience the change in their situation or circumstances. So these are some very um, important keys that one needs to be successful in intercession. So uh, I'm just going to take a small uh, pause here. Uh, any any thoughts, questions, or you want to add other ingredients to successful intercession? Uh, Pastor, I just wanted to, um, uh, it's a question as well as, yeah, uh, something to share. Uh, like when we pray mm -hmm. for people, uh, sometimes we just keep on praying uh, uh, just like that, right? Uh, but uh, when nothing is happening, you know, so um, sometimes I feel like, okay, uh, should I ask God how to pray for this matter or, you know, guidance regarding if I'm praying in the right way or if I'm praying um, not, um, in, uh, not according to God's will. So is it like uh, an necessary that I do that or is it that I just continue praying? Yeah. So, yes, Divya, we can do that. Uh, and uh, this goes back to the chapter that we um, uh, studied from uh, about praying a believing prayer, how we seek God's will first and then we keep praying that. So yes, uh, it, it is a good um, thing for us to ask God how to pray, how to pray for the person. Okay, and uh, God impresses something on your heart, you pray like that. Yes, yes. Uh, especially when there are, you know, recurring issues or uh, like we do not know the root causes uh, of things. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. So in those cases, yeah, God's guidance is much required. Mm. Yeah, sure, sure, Divya. I, I agree with that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor. Yeah. Sure. 
Sure, sure, uh, Divya. But I just want to add this one thing. See, also what happens in intercession is um, that, uh, you know, maybe we are praying for somebody and there's no breakthrough for a very long time and God reveals something to your heart. Okay. I would suggest that we keep it to ourselves and not, um, you know, share that as a reason or a factor uh, with the person who's not experiencing breakthrough. Okay, what I mean by that is, see, uh, what happens people, for example, you know, there is somebody, uh, they're waiting for um, a business deal to come through, okay, and they told us, and we are praying for that person. I'm praying, 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 five years, six years, that business deal is not coming through. Now, when I pray, if I sense, oh, yeah, there is some kind of a demonic, uh, uh, interruption that is why uh, this brother is not getting that uh, business deal now immediately if i go and tell the person you know what you have to change the way you pray you have to pray against uh, uh, some demons uh, that are stopping your business deal from coming through you know instead of building faith it will do the opposite in that person's life if you're sensing it just keep it to yourself and you just continue to pray. No need to tell because I'm telling you this because I have experienced, uh, you know, so many people doing things like that. They will just come and tell you, uh, oh, this is happening because there is witchcraft or this is happening because, uh, uh, you know, you are not fasting and praying. Like basically, it, it's more like a complaint, threatening, uh, you know, and you're, you're left wondering, why did I even ask this person to pray for me? Are you getting what I'm saying, Divya? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't... Oops, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, I, I was just, uh, yeah, uh, not for the sharing to the other person, yeah. but you know, to pray in the right way as to what yeah. is, uh, yeah... Uh, but yeah, when I'm reminded of Daniel, yeah, who was fasting mm -hmm. and he did not know like what is happening, mm -hmm. yeah, yet his prayer was answered when he, you know, earnestly prayed. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, true, true, the yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So just yeah. to remember that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Sure. Sure. No problem. Good question there. Thank you. Yeah. Any any other thoughts? Any other? Questions. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, maybe uh, you are all just thinking deeply about uh, intercession. Okay, fine. <laughs> says, please continue. Okay, let's continue. So that's about intercession. Uh, we could pray for people and have all these ingredients as we uh, bring them before the Lord. Now we are moving on to another section here. Uh, this is about travailing. Okay, travailing. Um, and this is uh, labeled as a deeper way of interceding. So what is travailing? Travailing is intercession also. So you're praying for people, you're praying for the land, you're praying for, you know, God to release um, uh, something that, that he has put on, on your heart. But this intercession is kind of uh, intense. Okay, so intercession when when you are seeking God, praying in general, we call it intercession. But when that intercession becomes intense, okay, that is termed as travailing. And I will explain to you exactly what this intense is. Okay? So the Bible compares travailing uh, with childbirth. You find Paul say this, I, I am travailing, I'm travailing for you uh, so that Christ be found in you. So he he 
uses this term prevailing as if to describe the pain that a mother goes through before childbirth so a deep form of intercession is associated with giving birth to the purpose of god so you prevail you first engage in intercession you pray deeply okay and after that what is expected the release of the purpose of god now, how long is this travail going to be uh, you know uh, that we don't know but it is that deeper level of intercession that one begins to engage in before the breakthrough comes forth so travailing you know, the deeper form of prayer is something that we are going to talk about so uh, you see that jesus travailed in in his uh, practice of prayer uh, in john chapter 11 you know, before he calls forth lazarus from the tomb you know we we see that he travailed okay, he kind of groaned before that uh, uh, miracle took place <coughs> you also see jesus engaging in a deep form of prayer in the garden of gethsemane he prayed he prayed so deeply that uh, you also read that kind of he was sweating blood okay and he was in, in a place of very intense uh, prayer basically he was in a place where he was seeking god to prepare him to uh, take that next step to go on to the cross so you read about the lord jesus prevailing engaging in a deep form of prayer so we've seen earlier that jesus also with vehement cries vehement cries in a deep way right he prayed to god he cried out to god uh, and in in those moments when he was uh, reaching out to god in these intense uh, prayer there was also a time when god sent an angel to strengthen him right in luke 22 we see that god sent an angel to strengthen him and how was jesus able to pray these deep prayers uh, we know that the holy spirit he strengthens us he helps us and in fact in uh, romans 8 verses 26 and 27 we see that the spirit also leads us to pray in sighs in groanings okay where we are engaging intensely in prayer now you know uh, just because we are using the term groaning and uh, uh, travailing deep prayer is not always associated with with uh, you know loud crying or um, weeping to god or you know groaning and all of that but in the spirit okay, so that's how we we should understand it in the spirit we are in a deeper place of engaging with god okay and jesus had this experience particularly particularly before he went on to the cross so is there a place for this kind of prayer in our lives i'm sure we have experienced it already okay many of us we would have experienced it um in our maybe our challenging times or you're waiting upon the lord for the birthing of the next the you know the next phase or the season in your life or the birthing of god's promise uh, in our lives and you know in those moments we we could go off into a place in our prayer life where we you know it, it's like the spiritual desperation the spiritual uh, I, I don't even know if we have the words to explain it but it's it's almost like the phase before a mother gives birth she's in pain she is um, you know in in, uh, in in a situation that she cannot verbally explain but she's engaging you know deeply uh, and then the next thing happens which is the childbirth so travailing in god is something that every believer can engage in they can experience uh, they can uh, have the help of the holy spirit to to engage in this deeper level of prayer now some of you might wonder 
where is the reference? I mean, do we really see people doing this kind of prayer? We'll talk about it. Uh, in fact, towards the end of this course, we are going to uh, look at the lives of some people. Okay, uh, and, and you know how these people prayed, how they cried out to God, uh, and they used to engage in, in prayers of travailing. Uh, hang on, let me maybe mention one individual to you right now because then it will make more sense. I won't share the details of his ministry, but just a moment. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this is from the ministry of Charles Finney. Okay, we'll talk about him later. Charles Finney. He uh, had an associate uh, who only engaged in intercession for him. His name was Father Nash. Okay. And uh, Father Nash, it is said about the way he prayed that it would be crying and weeping. Okay, uh, and it it was like before uh, Charles Finney would go to any place and he would minister. Father Nash, he had a team of two or three intercessors, so he would go with the team. Maybe a few months prior, hire a house there, and these people will stay. And they would only engage in fasting, prayer, calling upon the Lord. And people say that, you know, whenever you would go close to that house or that room that the people were praying, they would only hear like cries and groans. And, and they wonder like, what are these people doing? But they were engaging in a deep form of prayer. They were crying out to the Lord. And, you know, they, they basically, they were preparing in the spiritual realm. They were preparing that place for the, the gospel to be preached. And when you read about the um, uh, outcome of Finney's ministry, uh, it's interesting because as long as Father Nash was alive, uh, you see that Finney would go and preach and people will like, literally, it's like, you know, uh, low, low hanging fruit immediately respond to the gospel. And, you know, hundreds of people would just accept the Lord immediately okay and uh, so it was tremendous his ministry was tremendous but then you read about father nash passing away and then finney did not have that prayer support okay and finney he gave up he was not seeing fruit in his ministry and he realized the reason he was having tremendous fruit before father nash passed away is because of this kind of deep travailing intercessory prayer that Father Nash and team engaged in. Okay, so just one example there. We will revisit this later on. But for you to understand, what is this travailing prayer? So they used to engage with God, uh, you know, intensely. Uh, and I, I'm not saying this is, you know, something that we can make up. We can think, ah, today I'm going to uh, be engaged in intense prayer. No, but this is a leading of the spirit. Now. Let's say, for example, God has a call on our lives and uh, the birthing of that call is taking place. You know, God is opening up doors. He's moving you in a certain direction. And you've been praying about this all along. But maybe you come to a season in your life where when you're, as you're praying, you know, it's intense now. It's almost like you're, you're crying out to God. You're travailing like that mother who is in pain, just about to give birth. You're engaging deeply, right, with God. And... Uh, because you know you're, you understand what ministry is about. God has put you know people. God has put a place in your heart. You could be crying out for all those things also, and you could be praying for the lives of those people as well. So you are engaging in a deep way. Now, what else uh, could be happening in these times of travail? In these times of travail, it, it's possible that you know our heart, which is not aligned to God. There's this with intensity, you are uh, praying that that alignment would come about. Okay. And now in the Garden of Gethsemane, we know that happened to Jesus. He was travailing because in himself, he said, okay, let this cup be taken away from me. But he knew that he must yield to the will of God. So a prayer of consecration, a prayer of yielding is also something that is taking place as you are travailing. And in travailing, we don't understand the entire dynamics of what is going on. But in the spiritual realm, it's also such that things are being prepared to give birth. 
okay uh, so all this all this is happening when we are travelling in prayer uh, and so we must be led by the holy spirit we must be led by the holy spirit to engage in whatever kind of prayer he is leading us to do so we are not saying okay come on start travelling it's it doesn't happen like that as you pray as you journey with god right the holy spirit leads you and then you're moving in this travelling kind of an intense form of prayer okay uh, and we said about you know travelling uh, which is about giving birth so uh, paul uses this in galatians 4 and verse 19 again somebody please read that passage uh, galatians 4 and verse 19 Galatians four verse nineteen, my little children, for whom I labour in birth again until Christ is formed in you. Mm. So, labour and can you read that again, Divya? Yeah, sure. My little children, for whom I labour in birth again mm -hmm. until Christ is formed in you. Yes, thank you, Divya. Thank you. So, labour in birth. Okay, until Christ is formed in you. So, how was Paul laboring? How was Paul laboring for the maturing of the people that God had given him? So, as a leader, he was travailing, okay, or he was engaging in deep intercession for the uh, birthing and the maturing of the people in his life. so paul travailed in this and you know travailing it's a spiritual activity and paul understood it you know when he says ministry ministry is a spiritual activity and for that we have to engage in the spiritual ways in which ministry should be done so one of uh, the the uh, ways god has given us is prayer intercession so whatever god has called us to do whether it is worship or church planting or uh, anything you know there are so many things right leadership administration whatever it is we engage in prayer we say god you know this is the spiritual activity that i'm going to engage in paul knew that and that's why he said for the birthing of of, of uh, you know the kingdom of god for the maturing of the people i travail i travail for you so what was he doing he was engaging in deep intercession for the ministry to be done he was and it's not easy right when you engage in intercession it's like it's a way it's kind of it's not happy for the flesh it's not something that the flesh likes because we want instant results we want quick results but in the kingdom of god there is a place for intercession and deep intercession and travailing and this needs to be put in for the results to come so in a way it makes our flesh suffer you know it's it's like an intense suffering for the inner man and the inner man is holding on you know in this kind of a prayer till the breakthrough comes okay uh, and yeah and as we are holding on engaging in this spiritual activity god is faithful again it's like that mother who is travailing in those moments where she's just waiting for the arrival of the child but she is in that place of pain she is in that place of engaging right she is engaging she may not be moving around here and there but you know god has formed her in such a way that her body is engaging in this process of child bearing and similarly when we are engaging in travailing it's kind of you know those spiritual dynamics are taking place and god is able to release or give birth to the things that he has put on the inside of us so we must recognize we must recognize that we as believers you know, we have to allow the the this spiritual activity we have to we have to engage in prayer we have to engage in deep intercession for god to earth mighty things in us Okay. so uh, in scripture we also see that 
the birthing happens right from the womb uh, and when when uh, jesus said rivers of living water shall flow out of your belly now i know belly is not the same thing as the womb but just kind of drawing a simple parallel here you could say from a deep place rivers of living water referring to the power of god referring to the work of god referring to the ministry that god brings out of our lives from where is it going to come out of your belly okay so it's like from the womb or from from deep within us we can release these things but for that we have to engage with god also in a deep way and you know uh, one more passage here it's from isaiah 66 where uh, you know we we read about the birthing of god's people and about uh, you know mount zion so when the church travails we see that she will give birth so we the people of god we we are the we've seen about the birthing of israel and you know and the fact that uh, when when you talk about israel and zion uh, today we the church are that spiritual zion we may not be the literal zion physically the the people who belong to um, that region but we are the spiritual zion as the church and the church when she travails she gives birth to the purposes of god okay so the spiritual zion will give birth to the spiritual purposes of god so as the church as the church you know we're talking about deep place we're talking about the belly we're talking about the womb in one way you know the church is like the womb of god when god wants to give birth to his purposes you know the church has to engage in prayer so when we are engaging in prayer is as if you know we are the womb out of which god is releasing his promises he's releasing his purposes so uh, the church can engage in whatever form of prayer and especially in travailing prayer and from there will come many things into the world because that be as the church we are the womb out of which god is going to birth god is going to release so what i'll do is i will uh, stop here we still have to touch on some key things uh, regarding travailing but we will pick it up in the next class uh, any any thoughts so far any clarifications regarding travailing which is a deep form of intercession uh pastor nancy uh yes yes divya uh, yes it tra- travailing in the uh in terms of intercession only or do we consider uh like hannah's prayer for example mm, yeah. uh, that is that is kind of travailing right yes i think so divya yeah yeah okay yeah so it is not not only on behalf of others yeah mm. but she's praying for her needs yeah mm-hmm. right yeah that's true that's true okay. thank you yeah sure yeah so uh all right so what we'll do is we will again you know think about this thing through uh, thankfully our class is tomorrow uh, so if you uh, you know come up with some questions then uh, we could take it up tomorrow but we will continue on the same subject of travailing okay uh, yeah so no questions as of now so let's just close with a word of prayer i uh, would like to request somebody to please pray okay uh, i think last time All right, Rosalind. Rosalind, could you please pray? Okay.
Okay, not able to hear you, Rosalind. Okay, uh, maybe she is having some difficulty with the audio. Uh, not a problem, not a problem. Okay, anyone else? Anyone else? You can just jump in and read. Father, we thank you for this time of learning that you have given us. Lord, we pray that even as we continue to learn regarding prayer and intercession, we pray, O oh God, that we would be able to apply it in our own daily life, daily walk with you, and uh, help us to intercede for nations, help us to intercede for our locality, the church, and to see greater results happening, O oh God. We pray that you will empower us, Lord God, uh, let your Holy Spirit lead us in the right direction that how we would be able to pray for the things that is uh, uh, not been answered for quite a long time, but still help us to continue and pursue till we uh, receive those answers, oh God. We thank you for Pastor Nancy in helping us to learn from the word together. We also submit all of us as a, a community to your hands and we pray, oh God, that you would enable all of us to uh, strive more in prayer, oh God. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, John, for praying. And God bless you, everyone. God bless you. Yeah, take care. And we will see you tomorrow uh, in the prayer and intercession class. Bye. God bless.